Good evening, everybody. This is Hadron once again with the card reviews for Knights of the Frozen Throne. This is review number 11. This will be the last regular review I do for cards that have been revealed since we just had the live stream happen today. Then all of the cards have now been officially revealed for the expansion releasing on Thursday. So... We're going to be real hyped up about that, and we're going to go into these last few cards that were released over the weekend, and then my next video will cover the entire set as a whole. So getting right into this next review, we have Snow Fury Giant. So this is the giant of the expansion. It's 11 mana. It's unplayable unless you meet certain conditions, right? And it's a shaman card. So... It costs one less for each mana crystal you've overloaded this game. And it's an elemental. Uh, very significant synergies with this card in Shaman as a whole. Um, it's very easy to overload for at least one as a Shaman. There are a lot of cards that have a bunch of different uses and a lot of the same use in many different Shaman decks. You're bound to run into at least two overloaded mana crystals um, in your first three or four turns of the game. Uh, maybe even up to turn six, you've overloaded at least two. So this card is generally going to be somewhere around a nine or an eight cost in a general sense. Now you can build your deck to push this thing out even faster with the Drakari Defender card or any other card that has a significant amount of overload like Earth Elemental. So this could actually get very cheap very quickly uh, at the cost of you losing a little bit of uh, tempo for your follow-up plays. So you can just summon Big Minion, Big Minion, Big Minion, Snow Fury Giant as a tempo card. Now overload kind of works a little bit faster than playing out spells for Shaman. So this actually might be better than Arcane Giant in a deck that utilizes both overload mechanics and elementals. Um, it doesn't even have to utilize elemental. It's an 8-8 eight, eight you can play for very cheap in Shaman. Uh, but like I said, they utilize overload more than they utilize spells uh, specifically. So this card could actually see a fair deal of play. And if this card's going to see a fair deal of play, you're going to see a lot of Shamans out there that can evolve it into another giant. So because it's 11 mana, you can use your sea giants. And your sea giants will actually evolve into this minion because it's the only 11 mana minion in the game. And that's significant for every other 10 drop in the game as well. Um, if you have a minion that's devolved, like your arcane giants or your mountain giants, this actually that actually becomes snow fury giant because it's the only 11 drop in the game. So... It is very influential in that regard, but I think it'll also see play just because it's a very fast tempo play after you've just overloaded a bunch of mana. So, really cool concept, and you're probably going to see this card a lot, so you better get used to it. The next one is Forge of Souls, the warrior spell. Two mana, draw two weapons from your deck. Now, I actually think this is weaker than Battle Rage in the specific effect that if you get two cards off a of Battle Rage, you're doing very good, but those two cards might actually be something other than weapons that you can use, like Brawl, like Minions, like certain other effects that can use to restore health or armor. Drawing two weapons from your deck is pretty much kind of like uh, keeping up the pressure with that weapons energy you have with something like Pirates. Uh, this may actually replace a couple of your Pirates because you're more guaranteed to draw your Arcanite Reapers with this card. So it's kind of aggressive in that form but you can be more consistent with the weapons that you have in your deck so it could actually see a very good deal of play uh the downside is that you have to put those weapons in your deck to make use of the card um it could actually be used with the blood razor card so you can have some extra fiery war axes in your deck and you can have blood razors and you can play this card to draw two of them i would only put one though because if you're running a lot of weapons in your deck you're kind of Questioning whether or not what kind of deck strategy you have with running too many weapons inconsistently. So I think four weapons is enough. Um, so with four weapons is enough, I think one of these cards is plenty. This is probably not one you want to run two of, but it's very powerful in the fact that you can keep up you can keep up the tempo and the value of your weapons, and you can have several different weapons in your deck to utilize a very a variety of strategies. Um, it could be used to also pull out Gorehowl, uh, Fool's Bane, uh, any other kind of control weapons. So it's actually got a very flexible use 
but probably won't be run more than one in a deck, uh, in my opinion. Despicable Dreadlord. So it's a 5-mana 4-5 demon. Now, for once, we actually have an understated demon for its cost. It's kind of got, like, shamans have overload cards that are overstatted because the downside of overload makes up for the fact that it's low mana cost for a big body. Now, demons kind of typically have a big effect, but it also has a downside of either damaging your hero, discarding a card, destroying a mana crystal, or something to that effect. So this is actually a fair minion to play, fair to below average, but the effect is... Uh, you actually deal one damage to all enemy minions. So it has no downside to playing other than the extra mana crystal um, on its cost over like a Chowin Yeti or something. It's also one of the only five drops that Warlock will actually want to play proactively um, because dealing one damage to a lot of minions is actually quite influential. And this card kind of acts as a pseudo taunt in a way. So it, it's basically five mana, four, five with taunt. Uh, because your opponent doesn't really want you to keep killing off their minions every turn. So um, it is an end-of-turn effect. Uh, so they did reveal a card that has synergy with end-of-turn effects. So this could actually end up getting out of control in specific with specific combos. So it could be very, very powerful. And it's a good demon to have in your Warlock Demon deck, because it doesn't actually hurt you when you play it. Um, so yeah, I like the card. It's really good. Um, I just think that it's not powerful enough in the control game to be very influential. Four or five is fairly weak. Um, yeah, it is hard to kill off. Yes, it does kind of counter the priest thing a little bit, but, uh, there are ways to work around it and the effect may or may not be influential. Um, it pretty much has five attack. Uh, in some regards, as long as it lives, but in the general sense, it's probably not good in the control matchup, but it's really good in the aggro matchup, so I think I like it. This card is Druid of the Swarm. So Druid, two mana minion, two mana one two, that transforms into a one two with Poisonous, which is a beast by the way, or a one five with Taunt, which is also a beast. So it either turns into like a little spider with uh, Poisonous, or it turns into a Scarab, which has Taunt. Um, the 2-mana 1-2 Poisonous isn't very influential, but since we already have Stubborn Gastropod, which has both Poisonous and Taunt, and is still a beast, so the 2-mana 1-2 Poisonous is going to kind of be conditional upon certain board states. But the 2-mana 1-5 Taunt is actually quite good. Um, I mean, you talk about uh, how Voidwalker is a 1-mana one 1-3 one taunt is being played a lot in those aggressive kind of druid decks because it's a very cheap taunt to play that's actually quite difficult to kill um, on turn 1 or even turn 2. So a 1-5 with taunt is quite significant since this is the most aggressive amount of stats we've seen on a 2-drop that uh, actually can attack. And it also has taunt. So it can protect a, a board of small minions, and it can also uh, utilize the whole taunt strategy of Druid. And it's interesting to note that these are the two choices for the minion as well, since Poisonous and Taunt kind of are the left hand and the right hand of a definitive win condition. And the fact that you have maybe some really kind of scrappy Taunt minion protecting your Poisonous minion... That way, your poisonous minion is free to kill off one of your opponent's minions while your taunt is on the board protecting it. So that's they've kind of got this kind of give-and-take strategy on Druid here, and I really like that. And we saw um, in my previous video uh, Webweave, which summons poisonous minions. So you have Webweave, which summons poisonous minions, and then you have uh, Plague Swarm, which summons a bunch of taunt minions. When your opponent's got a board. So that those two in tandem actually work fairly well. And if that strategy kind of works out with Druid, this is the card that kind of fits the niche in both the Taunt and the Poisonous strategy. Um, also, it's just a very good general use card. And as I mentioned, the transformations are beasts. So there are some synergies with that as well. Having a 2-mana 1-5 beast that you can buff into a 3-7 with, with Mark of Yashiraj and it has Taunt is actually... Probably still not as good as Tark Creeper because Tark Creeper's three with a three five on your opponent's turn and you don't have to buff it. But it's still a very good combination to have. And it's 
going to see a lot of play in aggressive druid decks. It may even see play in the kind of mid-range to taunt druid that you've also seen. So I'm I really like the idea behind the card. It's really good. Now, since we're in the Druid topic, we have the Druid Death Knight hero that they have unveiled, Malfurion the Pestilent. So Malfurion's kind of Death Knighty theme is actually based on the plague uh, theme of Hearthstone and and uh, of the of the Death Knights. So he's kind of like the uh, undead like pestilence and uh, spreading disease and poison with scarabs and spiders and. And all that with a theme on it. So he's seven mana to play. Now his uh, battle cry isn't... Is, he doesn't have a battle cry. He has a choose one, but it works the same as a battle cry. So you can either summon two poisonous spiders or two scarabs with taunt. Now these scarabs and spiders are exactly like what we saw in the last minion that I just unveiled. It is either going to be a one two, is two one two with poisonous or two one fives with taunt. And that's fairly significant to note. So this is actually something that they've been pushing with the uh, Druid classes, the Poisonous versus Taunt. This effect does work with Fandral Staghelm. So if you have Fandral on the board, you actually get all four minions on the board when Malfurion is played. Two Taunts and two Poisonous minions. That's very good. That is very, very good. Um, and you can Innervate out. Since Druids have the Innervate option, you can play these on the same turn. And... So showing up with the hero power now, we have Plague Lord. So your gain one attack, gain one armor is now replaced with choose one. You either gain three attack or you gain three armor. So you have the ability to perform trades as well as stave off some late game damage. We've seen how powerful um, Justicar Trueheart is in Warrior when you gain four armor every turn. So if that is the kind of strategy you want to go for with Druid, you have that option to gain three armor every turn and keep gaining that health total over your opponent. Or you can utilize the advantage of dealing three damage to a minion at the cost of a little bit of health. Or you have that extra three damage to your opponent's hero to push some win condition for your minions so that's actually a uh, very flexible hero power and again it works with fandral staghelm so you get both of the effects tied together uh the the hero is actually very cool because you have a chance of summoning minions on the board when you play it it is seven mana you're only getting like very cheaply statted minions but if you have a if you have a specific board state that you want to have, your opponent's going to get sick and tired of trying to kill your your really, really small taunt minions, and they're not going to run out of AoEs since they are actually very beefy with their health. And you have other minions that synergize with taunt. Um, all the taunt minions that they've revealed in Druid in this expansion have one attack. So they're actually not very strong on the offensive side, but they block a lot of damage for their mana cost. So you may actually get to turn 7 quite consistently when you play all of those cards in the same deck. And then you can just turn right around and start hitting your opponent in the face for 3 every turn, which is very spectacular. Or you can keep up the defensive strategy with all the armor gain. So I really, really like the idea behind the card. It's very flexible, and I think even at 7 mana, it'll start seeing use even in general druid decks, even if the ones that don't run taunt or poisonous. Uh, just to get the extra value of having the hero power and having the extra little board presence on the top of it. I think it's really cool. So Paladins get Black Guard. It's a 6 mana 3, 9. Whoa. Um, those are some pretty wild stat distributions there. So why all the health with so little attack? Uh, but it's a 6 drop. It is the... Um, I've seen this stat line before. It is on a minion that never saw any constructed play. It's a, it's both Ram Shield. So it has to have an effect that's much better than both, but both's effect was really bad, so that's not really much of a challenge. Whenever your hero is healed, deal that much damage to a random enemy minion. Oh, okay. So you have Life Steal Synergy in Paladin. Not only do you get the restoration effect from basic Paladin cards and even some of the new cards that come out that restore health, you now have a chance to turn that health into damage, more damage. Whenever you get healed, you restore that much to, and an, you deal that much damage to an enemy minion. Um, note that it cannot go to your opponent's hero, so you cannot OTK with this card. 
Uh, but in this regard of board control, you can play this minion when you have a minion with lifesteal already on the board. And that minion, let's say it's the Chillblade Champion with a 3-2 stat line. So you can Chillblade Champion with this card. Um, and by the way, they both cost 10 mana altogether, so that this is possible. You can Black Guard Chillblade Champion, or Chillblade Champion Black Guard, however you prefer. And attack with the Chillblade Champion for 3, heal for 3, and then deal 3 damage. So if your opponent has exactly one minion, this is how it works. You charge into your opponent's face to deal 3 damage. You restore 3 health to your hero, and then this thing deals that 3 damage to the enemy minion. That can work. Or you can just charge into the enemy minion for 3, heal yourself for 3, and then deal another 3 to the minion. So that minion took a total of 6 damage. It's likely that your charger would die in the process at that point of the game, but hey, you just dealt 6 damage to a minion and played a 3-9, which is very hard to remove. So any healing that you ever do with this will actually destroy a lot of minions. And oh my gosh, this thing has a lot of synergy with forbidden healing. When you get 20 off, you basically kill just about everything in the game at that point. So, but hey, what am, who am I to judge, right? Paladins don't really have that many healing spells. How are you going to ever get this thing off consistently? <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't say that with a straight face. This is going to be a very dangerous card. And then finally, the Paladins get... The Death Knight hero, Uther of the Ebon Blade. So he's 9 mana, which is very expensive, but you get this 5-3 lifesteal weapon. I don't actually have an image of the weapon, but I really imagine, since it's a Paladin card, it's a 5-3 weapon, so it's exactly the same as Ashbringer. And since this is Death Knight theme, you're definitely getting a corrupted Ashbringer with lifesteal, and that is really cool. It's just like the card that I have on my ending video that I haven't got to show you on the end of this video. So you gain the 5 armor and you equip a lifesteal weapon with 5-3. And it's definitely the Corrupted Ashbringer. Uh, which is really cool because you gain the 5 armor initially. So when you deal 5 damage to something with your weapon, you actually have that little bit of armor as a buffer. So in that way, it works the same as kind of like True Silver Champion. Um, when you restore health first before you hit a minion, can actually be much a very big difference. But if your hero survives the hit, they're just going to heal the 5. And 5 health after hitting another minion is significantly going to uh, change the way that affects. It's basically going to either come out positive, or you're basically going to get tr a free trade off of a 5 attack minion or something. Even a very big minion that only deals a small amount of damage to this card, or to your hero. So... That's pretty cool, but that's not even the half of it. Okay, we have here the new hero power of the Four Horsemen. Now, generally speaking, this is roughly the same kind of flavor of hero power as what you have in the classic Paladin of summoning a 1-1. Now you just summon a 2-2. That's not as much of an impact as all the other heroes have gotten. But the kicker is on the second part of this. If you have all four destroy the enemy hero... So there are four different uh, Death Knight so you can summon from this card, which are the four horsemen: Darian Mograine, uh, Baron Trollbane, all the other, and all the rest of them. And uh, if you sum, if you have all four of them on the board, so think about it just like totems. Okay, if you have all four of these totem Death Knight cards on the board, which are two twos by themselves, you win the game. You just outright win the game. You destroy your enemy hero. That's it. That's it. Game over. If you have all four of these tokens on the board, you win the game. This is the single only other card in the entire Hearthstone game that wins the game without reducing your opponent's health to zero. It is the only other way to win the game without reducing your opponent's health to zero. And that is very, very significant, and it will be played just because of that um, alternate win condition style. And naturally, since it's with hero powers, it pairs well with cards like Auction, Near, Auction Master Beardo. If you put some very cheap spells like Humility, which you might just do, uh, Divine Shield even works, Adaptation works. So if you play uh, Hero Power, Auction Master Beardo, one mana spell, Hero Power, let's see, what is that? Five, six, seven, eight. So if you can get two or three hero powers off in the same turn, uh, you basically have a very good chance of just winning the game outright. So in that sense, you have an OTK combo that that, that relies 
nothing on even damaging the enemy hero. And that's very spectacular and also quite dangerous. Your opponent is always, always, always going to constantly clear your board every chance they get. And they may even neglect the fact that you are still at 30 health because your hero because the weapon is healing you and you've got lifesteal minions already in your deck. Uh, so this could actually be this could actually run away very quickly. Um, I think the hero card will still be played even if you don't take advantage of the fact that you have the hero power that can just win the game by itself. Uh, literally just win the game by itself. But uh, I think the hero would still see play just because it has that control aspect of the weapon with lifesteal. Um, and plus, it's a Death Knight hero. It's definitely going to get tried out in the very first set. And people are going to find a way to take advantage of getting that hero power and getting as much stuff as they can on the board all at once. Uh, but that's my that's the end of my review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, my last my next video will be my last one, and it will be um, actually I take that back. I'm going to make two more, uh, two more. <laughs> so uh, please stay tuned. I'll reveal all of the class cards next, and then I will do the last video with all the neutrals plus meta predictions. So I hope to see you guys on the flip side. And we will definitely get into this expansion once it comes out. So thank you all for watching.